Welcome back to CBS This Morning. Here's a first look at aerial footage of the massive Greenland ice sheet provided by NASA. It's part of a decade-long effort to track the potentially dangerous ice melt. Data released in March shows that melting has left a hole the size of Texas. I'm from Texas. That's big That's in big the Greenland hole, huh? sheet. That's critical because Greenland and Antarctica together contain 99% of the world's freshwater ice. Now, in just a few minutes, we'll show you why that could pose a worldwide danger. But first, our Earth Matters coverage turns to the fragile Rio Grande, one of the country's longest and most iconic rivers. For nearly 2,000 miles, the river winds its way from the Rockies down to the Gulf of Mexico. More than 6 million people in three states rely on it for drinking water and irrigation. But climate change is threatening that vital flow. We sent Michelle Miller on a 300-mile journey along the Rio Grande. She joins us now from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. By this time of year, water should be flowing apart along this part of the Rio Grande. In fact, exactly where I am standing now, but farmers who rely on it are going to have to wait at least another month. It's a side effect of a drought that has cycled on for the last 17 years, and scientists are predicting it will be even hotter and drier in the future. That means folks who rely on this river will have to adapt to what could be their new normal. For more than 130 years, this river gauge in northern New Mexico has tracked the pulse of the Rio Grande. It's the oldest continuously operated gauge in the United States operated by the U.S. Geological Survey. When we visited, the Rio Grande was beating along. On the bottom, we have a, a trap door that goes into the stilling well. So but Mark Gunn, a hydrologist with the USGS, uh, the the told us last July its flow nearly flatlined. Since 1889, last year was the lowest discharge in the history of this gauge. How low did it get? It was so low that we actually had to dig out this, this whole entire area and dig a channel into the river to be able to get water to go to the gauge. So it basically made your, your, your machine here malfunction. Yes, it did. The Colorado snowpack that melts into the Rio Grande is declining 25% in the last 50 years. And climatology professor David Gutzler says climate change is threatening to dry it up. I foresee dry spells getting drier, droughts getting more intense, and water resources being put under more pressure. With that in mind, cities downstream have been preparing. Albuquerque's Water Authority has spent $6 million incentivizing desert-friendly landscaping. What other things do we use water for? The city even sends every fourth grade class to the river for a lesson in water conservation. Because there can be no life without water. That's right. We followed the Rio Grande 150 miles south to where it pulls into the Elephant Butte Reservoir, New Mexico's largest. The shrinking reservoir can be seen from space, but up close you can see the bathtub ring left by higher water levels 25 years ago. We're sort of a microcosm of a lot of river systems in the world. So you're saying that the Rio Grande is the canary in the coal mine? Sure. Think of it that way. As things warm up, uh, you, for a given level of precipitation, you get less water into your river and into your reservoirs. That means less of it can be released to the 90,000 acres of farmland on the other side of this dam. It is now April, and we have not released any water from storage. We should have been running for a month and a half by now. A month and a half? Yeah. Until water is released in June, parts of the Rio Grande will look like this, dusty and dry like the desert around it, and the canals that deliver water to farms like Dixie Ranch will remain empty. So what happens upstream directly correlates with what you see here? Absolutely. Lots of snow, we'll have years of lots of water. Greg Davier has prepared his 310 acres of pecan trees for either scenario. He's added more groundwater wells for irrigation during drought. So this is a volumetric soil moisture probe. And so brought technology to the century-old farm to ensure that every drop counts. So we've developed a computer program for our farm. And when I irrigate the tree, it can then predict when it'll need to be irrigated again. Davier doesn't deny the climate is changing. He's just not ready to panic. Droughts come and go. You don't sound worried. The worry would be that there's a future that I can't plan for, and I worry that it's coming. I believe that we can plan, that we can adapt, 
and that we can adjust to whatever conditions come. Everyone's hoping that this year's above average snowpack will offer some relief, but it won't mean that the drought is over. In fact, one study is predicting that by the turn of the next century, that if everything stays the same, this part of the Rio Grande's water levels will drop by 50%. Gail? Oh boy, we don't want to think about that. Thank you very much, Michelle.